there's so many places we can go here, but maybe let's go to open weights first. What does it mean for model to be open weights and what are the different flavors of open source in general? Yeah, so this discussion has been going on for a long time in AI. It became more important since ChatGPT or more focal since ChatGPT at the end of 2022. Open weights is the accepted term for um, when model weights of a language model are available on the internet for people to download. Those weights can have different licenses, which is the effectively the terms by which you can use the model. There are licenses that come from history and open source software. There are licenses that are designed by companies specifically. Um, all of Llama, DeepSeek, Quen, Mistral, these popular names in open weight models have some of their own licenses. It's complicated because not all the same models have the same terms. The big debate is on what makes a model open weight. It's like, why are we saying this term? It's kind of a mouthful. It sounds close to open source, but it's not the same. There's still a lot of debate on the definition and soul of open source AI. Open source software has a rich history on freedom to modify, freedom to take on your own, freedom from any restrictions on how you would use the software. And what that means for AI is still being defined. So uh, for what I do, I work at the Allen Institute for AI. We're a nonprofit, we want to make AI open for everybody, and we try to lead on what we think is truly open source. There's not full agreement in the community, but for us, that means releasing the training data, releasing the training code, and then also having open weights like this. And we'll get into the details of the models, and again and again, as we try to get deeper into how the models will tra were trained, we will say things like the data processing, data filtering, data quality is the number one determinant of the model quality, and then a lot of the training code is the determinant on how long it takes to train and how fast your experimentation is. So without fully open source models where you have access to this data, it is hard to know, or it's harder to replicate. So we'll get into cost numbers for DeepSeek V3 on mostly GPU hours and how much you could pay to rent those yourselves. But without the data, the replication cost is going to be far, far higher. And same goes for the code. We should also say that this is probably one of the more open models out of the frontier models. Yes. So like in this full spectrum where probably the fullest open source, like you said, open code, open data, open weights, this is not open code. This is probably not open data. And this is open weights. And the licensing is a MIT license or it's, uh, I mean, there's some nuance in the different models, but it's towards the free, in terms of the open source movement, these are the kind of the good guys. Yeah, DeepSeek is doing fantastic work for disseminating understanding of AI. Uh, their papers are extremely detailed in what they do. And for other teams around the world, they're very actionable in terms of improving your own training techniques. Uh, and We'll talk about licenses more. The DeepSeek R1 model has a very permissive license. It's called the MIT license. That effectively means there's no downstream re restrictions on commercial use. There's no use case restrictions. You can use the outputs from the models to create synthetic data. And this is all fantastic. I think the closest peer is something like Llama, where you have the weights and you have a technical report. And the technical report is very good for Llama. One of the most read PDFs of the year last year is the Llama 3 paper. But it, in some ways, it's slightly less actionable. It has less details on the training specifics, like less plots, um, and so on. And the Llama 3 license is more restrictive than MIT. And then between the Deep Sea custom license and the Llama license, we could get into this whole rabbit hole. I think we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we want to go down the license rabbit hole before we do specifics. Yeah. And I mean, so it should be stated that one of the implications of Deep Sea, it puts pressure on Llama and everybody else on OpenAI to push towards uh, open source. And that's the other side of open source that uh, you mentioned is how much is published in detail about it. So how open are you with the sort of the insights behind the code? So like how good is the technical reports? Are they hand wavy or is there actual uh, details in there? And that's one of the things that DeepSeek did well is they publish a lot of the details. Yeah, especially in the DeepSeek V3, which is their pre-training paper. They were very clear that they are doing interventions on the technical stack that go at many different levels. For example, on their to get highly efficient training, they're making modifications at or below the CUDA layer for NVIDIA chips. 
I have never worked there myself, and there are a few people in the world that do that very well, and some of them are at DeepSeek. And these types of people are at DeepSeek and leading American frontier labs, but there are not many places. To help people understand the other implication of open weights, just, you know, there's a, a topic we'll return to often here. So there's a uh, fear that China, the nation, might have interest in um, stealing American data, violating privacy of American citizens. What can we say about open weights to help us understand what, what the weights are able to do yeah. in terms of <laughs> stealing people's data? Yeah, so these weights that you can download from Hugging Face or other platforms are very big matrices of numbers. You can download them to a computer in your own house that has no internet, and you can run this model, and you're totally in control of your data. That is something that is different than how a lot of language model usage is actually done today, which is mostly through APIs, where you send your prompt to GPUs run by certain companies. And these companies will have different distributions and policies on how your data is stored, if it is used to train future models, where it is stored, if it is encrypted, and so on. So the open weights are you have your fate of data in your own hands. And that is something that is deeply connected to the soul of open source. So it's not the model that steals your data. It's whoever's hosting the model, which could be China, if you're using the DeepSeek app, or it could be Perplexity. Uh, you know, you're trusting them with your data. Or OpenAI, you're trusting them with your data. And some of these are American companies, some of these are Chinese companies, but the model itself is not doing the stealing. It's the host. 